Okay, let's talk about the courts. This is kind of a lengthy one, so we'll do this in a couple parts. Uh, again, if at any point it, during this video you feel your attention wandering, just pause it, take a 10 minute break, get something to drink, something to eat, whatever, come back. I promise you I'll still be here. So the judicial branch. Every state has a unique court structure in which they try civil and criminal cases, and there is a difference between the two. Criminal cases, violations of the law. Civil cases, disputes between private parties. So, uh, what's one I can think of? Uh, like the Johnny Depp Amber Heard thing uh, a little while back. That was a civil case. No matter what the verdict was, nobody was going to jail. Neither Mr. Depp nor Miss Heard. Um, criminal case. Say there's some sort of murder trial ongoing. I can't think of anyone right off the bat. But uh, that would be criminal. That's a violation of the law. So the judicial branch, uh, it's, it's broken up quite a bit. The Supreme Court's on top. They have an administrative office of all the Illinois courts. There's a state board of law and examiners an attorney registration and disciplinary commission, a state appellate defender. Uh, over here, there's a judicial, judicial excuse me, inquiry board and a courts commission. And just how we, you know, we've talked about they work their way up. So there's a circuit court. If you don't like how that treats you, you can appeal. The appellate court can agree or agree to hear your case or not. If they think that the judge on the circuit level didn't do anything wrong, they probably won't. And then if you don't like what the appellate court says, you can go to the Supreme Court. And most states have a very similar structure in their court system. Most states begin at the circuit, or sometimes it's called a trial court. So we start at the circuit court. They're called trial courts, too. They're the court of first instance. So the first level, they're the circuit courts, so they're why it's called trial courts. Assuming the case goes to trial, rather than reaching out of court settlement or plea bargain, and that happens quite a bit these days, uh, plea bargain or settlement out of court. Uh, there will either be a bench trial, so a bench trial is where the judge sits on the bench, literally is part of the name, and the judge will determine the answer to the case, or there's a jury trial. If you've ever seen the movie 12 Angry Men, uh, that's an example of a jury trial. If you haven't seen the movie, uh, I highly recommend it. It's very, very good. But the jury trial, the jury will hear the evidence and render a verdict. So the trial court examines the facts. They'll attempt to resolve the dispute. Then there are 24 judicial circuits plus what we've got going on in Cook County. So in Illinois, circuit court judges, they're elected for a term of six years. There are these judges that are called associate judges. And they're appointed by circuit judges, kind of just to help. Uh, for a term of four years. And this was the best available data I could find from 2006. There are 492 circuit judges and 360 associate judges. Numbers just kind of tend to go up, so that there are probably more in 2022, but um, couldn't find it. And this link does work. YouTube is very finicky. I'm not going to click on it for fear of copyright. Then there's the Court of Appeals. And the Court of Appeals is the next step up. They hear appeals from the trial courts and from state agencies. So DCFS, for instance, could uh, have a case if we go to the appeals court. And they determine whether or not an error was made in the trial court. 
Now, appellate courts do sometimes have original jurisdiction, meaning a case goes right there and skips the trial court. Uh, appeals must be based on legal errors, and the appellants must prove that the error was prejudicial, uh, that it affected, in other words, the outcome of the case. So if a judge made a, a bad ruling or if there was you know, a, a jury uh, in a death penalty case and every member of the jury somehow was pro-death penalty or something like that, so there are 54 judges in five districts. There are 24 appellate court judges from the first district. That's Cook County and its environs. Uh, 30 appellate court judges from the second to fifth district. And they are elected for a 10-year term. That's a long time. And this works too, but again, copyright. Then we come to the Supreme Court and the state Supreme Court decisions are final unless there's a violation of federal law or the US Constitution so if that happens then the Supreme Court the US Supreme Court can step in and overturn a decision of a state Supreme Court but usually this is this well let's say this can be the end of a road unless something happens in a case. So there are seven Supreme Court justices. It's always good to have an odd number. That's a greater chance. We learned from uh, the redistricting commission that there will be a majority vote in some instance. Three from the first district, four justices from the second through fifth, and they're elected. They serve tenure terms. And this is where they meet. This is a terrible picture. Uh, there, if you, <laughs> it's a neat building. Uh, if you want to just Google it, you can. I'm, I know you can find a better picture of the Illinois Supreme Court building. And judges in Illinois, they can run for retention, meaning uh, after their term expires, whether that be four or six or ten years, they can say, "I want back in," and they can do that without party designation or opposition at the expiration of his or her term. Interest. I don't know if you'll find this interesting. My grandfather, my mother's father, uh, said, never vote to retain a judge. Never, ever do it. And I never asked him why, but I do it. Every, t <laughs> every time I go into a polling uh, station, I never vote to retain a judge. I don't know why my grandfather said that. Uh, I'll probably call him up and ask him after I finish this recording and let you know in uh, another part of this video. But, uh, yeah, that's just that's funny uh, to me anyway that he just said that. And then I started doing it for no reason at all. I was... At one point in my life, and according to my wife, I, I still am, you know, very, very stupid and impressionable. So maybe that was it. I don't know. But, yeah, I never vote to retain a judge. I probably should look into it more. Or ask my grandfather why he said that. But I thought I'd relay that story to you. So there's a parallel structure between the federal and the state courts. We have district courts, circuit courts, the Supreme Court. There are federal appellate courts, too. We have the state district trial courts, the state appellate courts. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, the Circuit Court of Appeals. So that is the appellate. And then the U.S. Supreme, the state Supreme Court. And most cases are filed in state courts, most every case. Um, most things are not federal matters. So in 02, uh, there were 341,393 cases uh, were initiated in U.S. district courts, whereas 92 million cases were filed in state district courts. And again, I'm giving you the, 
the best information I can find. I mean, I know O2 was uh, 20 years ago, but uh, it's the data I can find. <coughs> so jurisdiction. Uh, federal jurisdiction happens uh, when the subject of whatever it is involves the U.S. Constitution, statutes, treaties, or maritime law. And litigants include the U.S. government, more than one state government, and citizens of more than one state. And this would have federal jurisdiction right here. I'll move me up there. Okay, so everything else is not subject to federal jurisdiction. So jurisdiction for state courts, uh, divorce and custody cases, criminal cases, traffic cases, business, civil litigation. Uh, so like uh, the U.S. Supreme Court doesn't need to be wasting its time hearing a divorce case. The U.S. Uh, Circuit Court of Appeals doesn't need to waste its time hearing a traffic ticket. I'd hope you agree anyway, I would hope. Uh, so the states handle that. The federal courts handle the weightier issues. So general jurisdiction, trial courts, they hear any cases that have not been assigned to a special court. There are limited also or special jurisdictional trial courts. They're limited by the degree of seriousness or the types of parties involved. So there could be a special jurisdictional trial court for states. You know, if Massachusetts sued Ohio or something like that. And according to the website of the Illinois courts, the circuit court is a court of general jurisdiction which means it has original jurisdiction in all matters except those cases, limited cases rather, in which the Supreme Court has original jurisdiction. The trial courts hear a wide variety of civil, civil and criminal cases, ranging from small claim actions to domestic relations to criminal felonies. So these are, I mean, these are serious issues, but in the grand scheme of things, relatively small fry stuff um, to where a federal court doesn't need to be hearing it. I'm not dismissing the seriousness of any of those issues, but you know, they're, they're not fit for the federal courts. I'm just relating, I'm, I'm relating the facts, man, just the facts. So state Supreme Courts, there are just is discretionary jurisdiction, so the court gets to decide whether or not to hear the cases. Uh, the Supreme Court can hear it has this, except for in the death penalty. That's mandatory jurisdiction, uh, which occurs when the court is required to hear every case appealed to it. And we don't have the death penalty in Illinois anymore, so the discretionary jurisdiction is kind of all of pretty much what the Supreme Court of the state of Illinois does. And we will leave it here because for this week I'm going to put up the judicial, not the judicial, excuse me, what did I just do? The uh, legislative part two in this. So I'll pick up here next time we meet.